Hello and welcome to another drawing demo. Today I want to discuss drawing grapes. Now mind, mind you that these are artificial grapes, but they serve for the learner and even for someone like me who teaches drawing. If you, if you look at this, there's enough going on there to make this a problem to solve for a student who is serious about learning how to draw. And, 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 and looking at this form, I, I tend to, you know, ask the question, you know, is this one object? You know, this begs the question, are we drawing one object or are we drawing a bunch of objects? Because each individual grape is a single object, correct? So I, I like how this subject here sort of plays along that fine line of whether or not this is a single object or a grouping of objects. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to show you how to draw a group of objects while we're drawing this particular object. So, <laughs> you know, so that I think that we'll get a lot of out of this. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at how this resembles a shape. Now, does it resemble a circle, a square, a rectangle, or a triangle? If you guess triangle, you're correct. It's pretty much a very long triangle. So that's what we're going to start thinking about when we begin to draw this object. First of all, I determined the angle of the grapes. When you saw it before, you noticed how it was lying there on the marble slab and it was kind of like at an angle. Well, that's the angle that I got. And I got that by extending my arm out straight like this. Maybe you can see it like that, right? And I had um, something in my hand that's also straight like this pencil and I was able to mimic the angle of the grape and I just carried it over here. Then I measured the complete length of the grapes or let's call it the bundle of grapes so or let's call it the grape. So I took the grape and I measured it from one end to the other and it got to be this big. What happened was I multiplied it by two so I got this we got this uh, scale again one to two and so <clears throat> this is what we have. Next what I did was I measured how tall our grape was so the base of the grape the bottom of it I measured the tallest point of the grape which was there's a leaf and, and that's why I got this so I made I boxed it in like that now I'm going to show you you can actually see me draw some of this grape in real time. Again, we have to treat this like a single object or else we are going to go nuts. This is what you don't want to do, is try to draw every individual grape like that right now. I urge you not to do that. The other thing is, don't conflate this line for the top of the grape. You see, the grape kind of looks like this. Looks kind of like that, and then there's like a one solitary leaf popping up like that, and you know we have something like that. So this is kind of like the the entire shape of the grapes and the leaf. Notice how if I put two wheels on it, it looks like a hot rod. That's not what we want. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but notice how I made it a silhouette shape. We are going to look for that. Okay. So, but the thing is, this line here would probably run along like this. See that? The line is going to run along the grapes like that. So we don't want to conflate this with that. Okay? So how do we, how do we start this? <clears throat> well, I measured the, um, the tallest point of the grapes, and um, it's somewhere around here. And I and I and I did it really quick, like, and I just kind of banged it out. Really, it's 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 this tall, and I multiplied it again like that. Okay. Take my word for it. And so, um, with that being said, I can only I don't have to worry about that leaf. I can just focus on the bundle of grapes that make up this shape here, and then I'll add that on later. So what I'm going to do is squint. And I'm going to try to get these angles. And, and so I'm going to start up here. And um, 
I'm literally using my vine charcoal as my ruler. It's a little bit crooked, but if I put my thumb up here like that, it's straight enough. You see that? It's straight enough. So I hold it like that, and I get my angle like that. And um, instead of measuring each thing individually, I'm going to you know, draw it out, and then I'm going to go back and measure it. So I'm going to confirm my, my, my drawing after I make the drawing. So let's do that right now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of go really quick here and um, I'll try and show you what, what I'm doing. I go like that. This, like that. Hops down like this. So you see how I'm doing this? I'm just hacking out the angle. Now here it goes like this and it tucks up in like that. <clears throat> yeah, something like that's happening and then this pops up like that. And so now I can confirm my marks. Like for instance, I'm gonna measure this thing here. And it turns out it's that big. But if I re repeat it like that, it goes to be like that. And it's a little bit, a little bit too big. So I just shrunk it just a little bit. You see how I did that? Now here, there's some, there, this, this is the top of a prominent grape, like right there. So, measuring that, I don't think it's really necessary, um, <clears throat> but you, 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 you want to measure, like, say, from here to here. And, and so I can do that here, and I repeat it to here. So that's pretty close. So that's, that's how we, we start with drawing something as complicated as a bundle of little grapes. I could um, put in this shape here, which is a leaf, a grape leaf. Kind of tucks in right here like that. So I recommend, if you need, you can always go back to the beginning of my video to compare this drawing with the the footage in the beginning of this video of, of the grapes. And there is a shape here. And these are like four-sided shapes, like diamond shapes. You know, I've noticed that when I draw leaves, I tend to look for that four-sided um, shape. Sometimes three-sided, but really usually it's four-sided. See that? There's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then you you, like this, you, you add an extra side. So we are pretty much, and I'm gonna cheat and stick that little guy out there because I didn't include that for how wide it is. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. You know, little, little things like that you can work out on your own. Now, we have to work with the overall shape of this thing. Again, I don't recommend coming in like that, like that, like that. So I got my Muller stick over here, and I'm gonna go like this, and uh, just come in here and get this grape like that. See that? Looks like the nose of a cartoon character, doesn't it? And uh, that's okay. I don't mind it. And again, you start out with with um, no curves. You see how I'm blocking that in, and I'm literally counting the grapes. I'm actually counting these guys. Maybe not out loud, but believe me, I am. I'm paying attention to that, that detail. And like right here, that's not really true to form. It, this, this comes down like that and it dips in like that. That had a curve in there. You know, it's not a big problem that I did that. Uh, it looks good, so I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna come over here. And I'm a little bit off. See that? 
and I'm going to hold off. I'm going to move on to the rest of this. Sometimes I do that. Like, you know, I feel like I'm on the clock. I'm not going to erase right now or anything. I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna to just, uh, you know, keep going. Looks like I have to support my hand. And this is a, a challenging little bugger. You know, it's another reason why I want us to do it. You know, right now you're in the stage, like I try to set up some kind of a working program for, for you to, um, to consider. Um, you know, you start out with making some marks and then you make a value scale. And then, you know, you do your, your, your cylinder cone sphere and a cube and then we start drawing sing single objects and I even had you know people draw a drawing that I drew using this uh, Charles Bart technique and that's like why do I have you draw a face you know of all things it's just to show you what you can do a lot more people succeed in drawing that person's face than, than I had anticipated so in the beginning of the class I usually have people do that particular thing then we do some blind contour. All these things kind of help. So like now we're moving into the creme de la creme. I think of this drawing experience as drawing from life, drawing objects from life. And, and um, I stress this, you know, for the learner because, you know, you can always draw from a photograph on your own, right? You don't need me to give you permission to do that. But I will help you to do that. <clears throat> and I am doing so right now. By doing this, I'm helping you to draw better drawings from a photograph. Remember this is 360 and the photograph is 1, right? So you see how that works. A lot to be said about this. A lot to be said about this indeed. And let's see. So you can see it already is beginning to look like something. I finished the bottom part of this and then I made a silhouette shape. Now. I think that instead of drawing every individual grape that's inside here, like I did these, we should try something different. And I think you're going to really appreciate this. There's something that we call drawing the mass. So I'm going to draw the mass, and as I draw the mass, I'm going to use value and different uh, tonal treatment to create what's called tonal structure. So I'm going to create structure through tone not through line okay to do this you got to squint and I'm gonna start doing that right here I'm drawing the mass I'm working with the mass and I'm using the vine charcoal to help me map it out and these are the main areas and usually when I do this <clears throat> I realized the mistakes that I did <laughs> and so I have to go back and fix it and that's why I'm really a, um, an advocate for drawing the mess. This is the first time we're talking about about that. You see? I'm not using line. If done right you can cut your work in half. Gotta be patient you got to make it work. Like right here, there's um, three grapes. One, two, three grapes. And um, <clears throat> I'm not going to draw them in right now. But instead, I'm drawing the mass. And I, and I go for the darker areas first. And I even can entertain drawing the shadow, because that's part of our drawing. Sometimes my shoulder does get in the way. Sorry about that. And I, I think this is something I should probably let you see. I do intend to try to make my videos more fast, more quick. Uh, my last one was divided up into four sections. Uh, I think that's partly because I'm still learning how to make good, effective uh, videos, you know. Um, I didn't want to, you know, chin saw it on the viewer. I wanted you to see what the heck I was doing. And um, I look at other videos and I, they seem to give you the ample information that you need, but they do it in half the time. So I, I have to deal with this. So we'll, we'll figure it out. 
I would say that if you had like 10 people and you showed them this and you asked them, what do you think this is? I would say more than half would say, oh, that's, that's um, some grapes. So, and that's good. You never get that thing like, what is that, you know? <laughs> Nothing hurts your feelings more than when you're struggling on something and, you know, somebody looks at it and like, what, what are you drawing, you know? Nothing hurts worse than that, right? So, but I would say, you know, a lot of us, we be able to say that that looks like uh, you're, you're drawing some grapes, you know? You're trying it, if anything, you're trying. So let's see what we can finish up with, huh? Shadow. Looks kind of odd, doesn't it? Because, you know, we're not done. And then um, this, we can we can entertain that idea right now, just for the sake of argument. I want to have that nice, dark background. See that? And I think that we have to establish that. Because this silhouette is just to define the form. It's not to say that <clears throat> it's going to be all that dark. I kind of want the dark butting up against our grapes. And, and remember, I said try to use bigger, uh, bigger uh, it's, um, drawing utensils first. And if you find that you can't do it, then reach for your smaller. Now, I'm a real proponent for that. I've learned, I actually learned that from the instructor. And I think that he, uh, so many years ago, I think that they saw me. He saw me. Always using the same brush, and so he's a small. He said, "No, reach for your." He goes, "Reach for your bigger brush, and then only go small when you have to." And it's like, oh, well, I guess that's why I'm in, uh, taking a, taking your painting class, you know. <laughs> that and that's what it is, folks. I mean, sure, you know, a lot of us can figure this out on our own, but <clears throat> getting some help isn't really a, uh, it's not really wrong to get help. So, like, you can see how I'm putting this together. And again, you know, it doesn't look complete, you know, by a long shot, and it's okay. We're, you know. Let's kind of, you know, see what you can do. See, I just kind of want to stand back and look at this and say, okay, that's the composition we want. So what we have is a mess. It kind of looks like a mess, doesn't it? But for the experienced learner, you, you, you see this as a form of shorthand. You can decipher this as the very thing we're trying to pinpoint and draw. So before I go there with my my charcoal pencils and compressed charcoal, I, I have to still, you know, work things out with the vine charcoal. I'm going to do a lot more with the vine charcoal than what we are accustomed to do because of the nature of this animal. Okay, we're going to, it's a little bit different than the others. You're going to see in a minute, it's maybe in a couple of minutes. Um, I haven't done grapes like this in I don't know how long. To be honest with you, it's kind of making me nervous. I'm a little bit worried that I might not <clears throat> be up to snuff. So let's hope for the best. See, I'm drawing the mass. I'm drawing tonal shapes, value shapes. Everything has a tone. Even white has a tone. In green, there's a green tone, there's a red tone, yellow tone, white tone. All things have a tone. Different tones. When you add black to a certain color, that's a shade. When you add gray to a certain color, that's a, that's a um, tone. So we can say that this is a tone or maybe a shade. Um, if we want to be uh, exact.
And again, I want you to see some of these things. And it's different than my setup because the marble slab, which is behind this grape up here, is lighter than the grape. And if this confuses some of us, some of us might have to put something dark behind the grapes, which maybe I should have done, but let's just see what we can do with this. So now, <clears throat> Um, I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to pick up my pencil, my charcoal pencil, work on the outer shape. Very tricky, but we can do it. So let's come over here. I'm going to come over here and get this little guy right here. Now I'm going to come in and actually start to curve it up just a little bit. You know, I'm going to alleviate, remove the hard flat edges of that particular grape. We gotta be patient. This is gonna take some time. And again, you know, feel free, you know, since this is a video, you can go back and forth and you know, you can you can you can pause the video, go back to the beginning of it and compare this with that part of the actual bundle of grapes. And then you go back you know, where you left off. You know, maybe make a note of it so you, you know, like where you left off so you have to always, you know, fumble for where you are. It's it's easier for me instead of having to, like, cut back and forth between the grape and my drawing of the grape. Because, um, you know, we, we want to get this show on the road. We're going to get these drawings uh, done for you. And um, no matter what, you'll get the information you need. So I doubled up that line. See, I made it like that, but I realize it's supposed to be popped up a little bit. I'm not even go there and erase that right now. I'll, we'll wait. See, I'm because I'm in, you know, I'm in the, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the flow here, you know, and so I'm just gonna keep going and, you know, sometimes when you're in the zone, you just don't want to always stop and correct yourself. Just keep going, make a note of it, go back, and then fix it up later. I don't know if I'm the only one who actually says that. I think others. No, and they don't say anything about it. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm kind of confused here, so I'm gonna go and find something to latch onto. There's a big, big old nose of a grape here. It looks like a nose, big clown old nose, a green clown nose of a grape. So I'm gonna latch onto that. And behind that grape, there's another one looming from behind right there, peeking its head right up there. And it, it worked out nicely that I was able to you know, get that. And then there's another grape right here, as if resting on the top part of this leaf. But it's really not. It's actually behind the leaf. This leaf is in front of these two guys right here. So you can already see, you can already see how, you know, the form of the grapes are coming. Now there's two more grapes here. And for some reason, I, I made this gap too great and so I have to correct myself very tricky you know there, there's like a, always something missing you know when I do these things and and I might purposely leave one mistake that I see on here on purpose and so you will see it you know, and some you know, I'm 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 supposed to be teaching you stuff. You know, sometimes I can teach you like or show you like this is different from that. You know, uh, you know, other times I'm gonna hide the mistakes from you. <laughs> so I hope you've seen this quite well. You know, this part's working okay. You know, come down here, and then there's another grape over here. So let me, let me, um, cause I'm going to try to make this video shorter for your viewing time and, and still try to give you the right amount of information for you to complete this drawing successfully. You can see how we've done that, but here I've, I've done this. I'm using a 2B charcoal pencil. It probably should be sharper than this. 
Um, so here's a case where I'm showing you what not to do. Don't draw with this pencil. But I know I can wing it. Um, so anyways, so and then notice how I'm still using the Charles Barr technique where I'm using a series of straight lines, diagonal lines, to create all these complicated forms. And as I finish up the shading, all those straight lines become smooth curves. Also, and this is the important thing, you see I'm trying to define the form through some shading? And that's what I want you to see, okay? So you, you have to, I'm going to have you see a couple of little things as I maneuver down here underneath this leaf to show, show you my point. Maybe I can hold a pencil like this, you see that, and I can just go up and down. And I'm always getting my information from what's in front of me. And I'm constantly squidding, you know, I don't want to draw all the, def all the details right now. I can get, and the thing is, you know, I can focus on where I want to get detail and where I want to leave out. That's called editing. There's so much about drawing that we can get into. That's why there's tons of books on this subject. People have been drawing for centuries. So, you know, um... Take what I say with a grain of salt, but I, and, and uh, you know, I, I do go by an authority, you know, I'm not just making it all up. So, what would be the authority that I'm going by, apart from, like, say, Renaissance or Baroque, but in particular, the School of Design by Charles Bart, right? That's my authority, and so this is something that I just didn't pull out of my, my head and say, hey, I'm going to make this up and just try to, you know, pawn this off for, for truth, you know, I'm not doing that. Beware of that kind of instruction, right? So you see how that's happening right here. And a little bit of a problem here. You know, I'm going to tell you where the problem is. The problem is right here. You know, so I confess, now you know I have a problem with this shape here. And so I'm just going to, you know, just tell you. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to just work it in here. I'm going to, you know, now you know. And you can always go back to the beginning of this video to see and compare my drawing to the actual grapes. And I'm not trying to rush this, you know. I mean, I know I could be getting oils for my Pringles, you know, or I could be drawing and, well, let's just draw. At least let's get done, hopefully, before dinner time, right? So you see how we're doing this, right? You see how I'm, I'm not just drawing every individual thing. And, and maybe, maybe you have a game plan where you go outside around the perimeter and then you start kind of creeping up inside, okay? Getting some <clears throat> overlapping action here. And so you can see how the shape of this grape was, I hear, but it was too small. Literally, some of these shapes remind me of toes. Maybe this is a good study for you to do if you have to do a painting of feet. Draw some grapes. Uh, so I wanted you to see some of this uh, overlapping um, activity. Now you can see I'm migrating inside. We still have this to do, but we'll wait. This is very tricky, gang. Very tricky. I'm not doing this in stride. I, I have to be really paying attention. You know, and I like to sometimes think and talk about certain philosophical topics. Like a friend of mine was talking to me about um, artificial intelligence and art. There is um, a company that's selling these AI prints of art. Like these, these people made a an artificial intelligence device or a computer and what it does is um, after being exposed to tons of art made by people it starts to create its own art and the, the, the results are pretty interesting you know I got I gotta give it that much it's fascinating you know to see this and you know boy I'm seeing some huge mistakes in my drawing right now um, <laughs> and and so it's uh it's fascinating, you know. 
I'll explain this in a minute. What we have is an artificial intelligence computer making art, basically. And so my immediate response was not to say it's it's garbage, you know, and you know because I want to preserve my job as an artist, you know. If you were to ask me if I feel threatened, you know, maybe maybe inside I do, you know, deep inside I do. But this wasn't the topic of the question that I that I raised to my friend. And, and and he wasn't like all for it, you know, or anything. He was just saying, hey, did you see this? This is kind of crazy, you know. And so I asked a question, you know, like um, looking at this stuff, we have to ask ourselves about artificial intelligence. Um, like you and me, we have an opinion, right? And I was thinking that um, artificial intelligence doesn't have an opinion, does it? You know, so that's the first question I, I brought up was, does the artificial intelligence have its own opinion? What, it, what does it like? What does the artificial intelligence computer dislike? And it ties in with the will to live. You've heard of the term will, like you have a will of your own. You know, I will it to be so. Arthur, Arthur Schopenhauer, a German philosopher, wrote a book on will. Entire big old thick book on the topic of will. And he, he sourced that to be the beginning of life. He traced that to be the source or beginning of life. Something to do with will, with a capital W. Interesting stuff. If you want to, I read him when I was in undergrad school. Arthur Schopenhauer. And, and so I just simplified that question to this you know, topic on the artificial intelligence computer. And I, and I said, you know, or I asked about, you know, does this computer have its own will? Has, does this computer have a will of its own? And so... My friend says he thinks that someday they, they will get this, they will gain that ability. And then he said they'll be able to assess. Okay, so what I did here was I realized that I had a problem with the placement of that leaf. So without turning off the camera, I'm gonna I'm gonna measure from here to the end of that leaf. You might be asking yourself, why did you do that before? And I'm going to reply, I thought I did. And you're going to say, well, you didn't do a good job. I'm going to say, I know. So it's a little bit off. You know, my leaf was a little bit off. So instead of messing around, I'm going to come back here with my vine charcoal and try to reposition our problem child. Sometimes you have to go back. So I'm going to go back now. And I'm going to use the vine charcoal to make sure I can really lock this, this, this boy down. And it's tricky because when you look at something next to something else, when dealing with color or value, you get what's called simultaneous contrast. And that deals with how something changes because of what's next to it. So with color, something, a color or a hue of a color will change if you put its complementary color next to it. Similar with value, but why not with shape? I mean, you got tone right here, right? So I think that's why we, we make mistakes. Like this leaf here should be a little bit smaller, but for some reason I made it the same size. I don't know, just whacked out my perception because of what I think is a form of simultaneous contrast. So now, to be a little bit more cautious, I'm going to use my vine charcoal to deal with these problems. And um, I count the grapes, and boy, I, I'm all over the place here. This looks really nice, but it's not correct. And so I can't wipe it away because I use compressed charcoal. I use a charcoal pencil, which is a form of compressed charcoal. But so I use I use a charcoal pencil. I I um, maybe was too um, ambitious, you know, for my own good here. You know, again, we don't want to rush this. You know, sometimes when we draw, we're always trying to rush it because we have other things we have to do. You know, especially for a student taking a class and oh, I gotta. I gotta work on my economics paper, or I gotta work on my chemistry, you know, reading, you know. And the drawing tends to get like shoved in between these other classes, you know, because you can't really, you know, compare like your occupation with like saying a drawing class. Like you're taking this drawing class because you wanna enjoy 
some of us might be taking this class because we actually really want to get some kind of a career in line with art and that's 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 me I'm one of those people and let me tell you it's not easy but a lot of students that I have they're interested in like psychology you know medicine whatever you know business and so they you know they I understand they I have to I have to do this term paper man I got this math test that I have to deal with so unfortunately the drawing tends to be shoved in between these other classes and sometimes you know winds up in the back of the bus so the thing is though how do you deal with that I would say schedule a time like say okay 11 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock I'm just gonna deal with my drawing even if your drawing sucks at the end of 3 o'clock you know maybe you should just stop hey I did my did my time in 11 o'clock to 3 that's a lot of time and that's not easy to do to put it down you know and I've had that experience many times like oh like I I teach more than one class and I used to have my own studio so I would be painting between classes I did a morning class and a night class so what, what did I do in the middle of that I took a little power nap you know ate something and then I started working in the studio sure enough I'm working on a painting and I have a major problem I am but I gotta get to class <laughs> So it's, I just put the brush down and get to class, you know. And let me tell you, a couple of times I was late <laughs> because, you know, this stuff really grabs your attention. Um, confessions of an art teacher. Okay. All right. So this is tricky here. You know, I, over here there is a grape. And so now I'm going to try a different technique. I'm going to, I'm going to make a vertical line like that. That separates one grape from the next grape. And then I'm going to make another vertical line like that. I can measure that. You know, I can do all these things. I can count how many grapes. So there's like two here, and there's nothing here. There's something like this in between this shape and that shape, which is a grape tucked behind, but are going to be two grapes there. Then, there is this grape right here, and then this grape here, and the little one dropping down there. I think we got it. So let's, let's test this theory here. So now, because I really messed up, I have to implement this Charles Barr technique and just get the basic shape in. Some of us might want to make little squares. You, know, you can make a square here, and you can make a square here, and you can hack down. Hey, let's try that. Let's, let's put our money where our mouth Let's put uh, the money where the mouth is, right? Is that the expression? Yeah. Let's put the money where the, our mouth is here. Let's do that. This thing kind of pops up like that. So I make, you know, I'm making reference to maybe making a series of rectangular shapes like that. Each one is for a given grape. But you gotta measure, you gotta compare, and it's really not easy to do. So we're struggling here, gang. Right now you see me struggling. I might be a doctor of art, but I am struggling. Okay, let's see, let's get this over here. I tend to go by that name, you know, my friends kind of joke around. And I, hey, here's a doctor of art, you know. And this big old case walking around, you know. It's, it's a lot of fun, you know, to play these kinds of things, you know. Um, so, yeah, so you can see how this area now is coming to light. And, and, and if you look, there's like three, one, two, three grapes here. It's really hard. You see, we have the leaf here. We have this grape here. And then we have this grape here. And there's another one right here peeking. This might be one of those things where I have to eliminate. Okay, so that's that. We fixed it. We have the overall configuration of this grape determined. And I have that layer of, uh, of charcoal pencil, 2B preferably, on here. So now we're going to discard everything that might be confusing us and everything we don't need. It's 
So we're done with the vine charcoal, more or less. Now I'm going to come in and start focusing on going from the back to the front. I don't think I'm going to show you the process of drawing the marble because I have two other videos where you can review that. I'll explain what we're going to do with this particular drawing. I'm going to go for the black and the white areas. Almost like a comic book. And before comic books, we had something known as chiaroscuro, which is Italian for light and dark. So I'm going to hit the light and the dark chiaroscuro. As you can see, I already hit the back with the black uh, and, uh, and it's going to gradually get lighter as we move into the front. And so now we're going to come in here and just bring out the dark areas. I'll show you a couple of that. Let's go in here. And I'm going to try to exaggerate the contrast of the light and the dark for this particular drawing. I'm going to examine uh, the aesthetic quality of what is known as chiaroscuro and I'm going to implement it here. Leonardo da Vinci is the artist who really uh, defined that for, for the rest of us. And so I'm going to play around with that right here. <clears throat> I recommend looking at his work. There's not a lot attributed to his name in terms of fine art, but there's a lot of inventions that he did, and looking at his sketches is a real joy. So this little area, I just wanted to kind of tease the viewer with this. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to, we're going to, we're not going to finish the whole thing like that right now. We're just going to do just this little area just to show you what I'm talking about. Uh... And, and so, notice how it's not just a bunch of outlines, although in some of these areas, yeah, you get that, but really, I'm not depending only on that, like a coloring book. Not like a coloring book at all. And to prove the point, like, you know, you with this kind of technique, look at what we can do. You see that? And it's not just a bunch of lines anyways. A lot more to it. And also when you do the technique that I'm giving you with the vine charcoal and then on top of it with the uh, charcoal pencil, you can do this. And this is this is very important. This is tantamount to what we're trying to achieve because with this, you get that. And then you can pull out certain areas that you want to pull out. Um, like, let's say you want to do this part of the leaf. You use a an needed eraser, and you can even get the, the activity of, the, of the, the veins of the leaf. You see that? And you can come in with a darker line to really delineate the shape of those veins. I just wanted to show you that, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off on that and I'm going to darken all this. I'm going to finish up the marble. Yes, yeah, so I'll finish up the marble and then we'll pick up where you left off. As you can see, I pretty much rendered in everything for the marble in the background. And I even added some nice effects with these kind of marks here. These negative marks with the eraser. And that's one nice thing about this. You can create some really nice effects like just by by doing this like like that see that that little cool stroke right there see that and maybe I won't keep that there but you can you kind of get the idea so now what I want to do is venture in here now there's two ways to do this one way is just to hit the highlights right now so right now we're not just making it up I'm looking over here still and trying to make sense of it. So now I'm pulling out the lightest of the light. So you have the darks of the darks and the lightest of the lights and then you have like this gray in between. Not every one of those grays will have a highlight. You know there's there's like a 
this one in here tucked inside there and eh, it doesn't really have a highlight. There is a problem right here. So let's 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 deal with that. It kind of bugs the heck out of me. I, th I thought that I fixed it, but I didn't. Like they're they're supposed to be like uh, we have this up here, this here. I'm looking at that and this here. Oh, okay. No, it's a, it's alright. It's a little bit. Let's see. If I if I do this, watch this. I'm gonna fix it more or less by eliminating some of the black. This definitely has a highlight. This guy down here has a highlight. Little one up here has a highlight. Kind of like that. Almost. Highlight. It's the one back here. This one really doesn't have a highlight except that little pop I just gave it. Highlight. This here, little dot. And the reason why is this one here is interfered with by the shadow that this one's casting. I'm gonna borrow some tone there and move up like that. It's kind of cut off like that, so it's really neat. I might hit that with a pencil later. And there's some really nice thing going on here. There, like this, this guy here has a big highlight, like that, behind this guy, and then it goes like it's lighter all around, but not too light. So what's cool about that is. Like this grape is behind this grape, and yet uh, the grape that's closer is darker. Kind of neat. These are the things you look for. I'm gonna darken this up again. I had to. I had to do that. Hope I'm not in the way, as I usually am. Damn it! Let's see what we can do here. The shape's kind of messed up. But we'll fix it. Yeah, there's some neat things going on there. Let's let's, uh, let's focus on that. Uh, I think that yeah, this just just kind of pulls out here a little bit, but then it kind of goes down. Because you can see, we sharpened our I sharpened my uh, pencils. I have a 4B pencil sharpened like this, a 2B pencil, and an HB pencil sharpened like this. So I had to do that and. Um, you might have to as well. It's always good to have that done before, but I just went right into this. But no harm done. We got it. We got it going on. And then there's a shadow of this grape casting on the, uh, the leaf. As I'm, while I'm in here, I can kind of flirt with the darker areas. And then, like, there's this uh, stem of the grape leaf. See that? Now there's another stem like this, and it kind of crowds up, crowds up, gathers up like that to a stop, like that. See that? So we're, you know, we're getting there slowly but surely. And uh, no more action for the HB. I gotta go into the 2B for some more action here. It's just the way it is. So let's see here. 4B is great for the really dark areas. A 5B, you can have a 5B pencil. Uh, maybe I should have one too, but I don't right now.
see that? That darker than the one behind it, and it makes it look really interesting. It's still not done here, but we'll we'll get it. Play with the leaf, probably hold off on that. But see how that works? Probably wondering what next. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> um, probably talk about it now. Because, like, now what I want to do is go back to the 4B and really attack the dark areas. And I purposely am making some of these dark areas darker than what the original is saying. Because I want that Carol Skirrell action. Now, there's a problem here. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you'll do this. I have the wrong guy overlapping. Uh, like, like right here. Uh, oh, no, no, it's okay. I, I take that back. I do have an outline that shouldn't be there. And I have the distance between these two grapes further apart than what they really are. But I, I think it works. So what I'm going to do instead is just preserve that and just pull this back, push this back. So this guy, this grape here is behind this grape and this grape. A little bit of creative license. I think you can get away with that. Um, <clears throat> so and then like the core of shadow will really make sense when you when you do this. You butt up to the highlight a gray or a dark gray. See that? And I'm using this to draw it. That's what's cool. It's almost formulaic at this point, you know? But, you know, I still look at the original. I've always been one of those artists to look at stuff and get my information from that. Even if I'm doing like a scene that I'm creating from my head, like if it involves some grapes, I made up the composition, but then I might look at some real grapes just to get the effect that I want. So we could, uh, let's hold off here and let's, let's really, you know, meander in here. So this black line is a stem. There's no other line like that in here. Okay. Without even talking about it, you notice how I eliminated the, heart, the straight edges of the Charles Bard method of blacking down these shapes now it's all bubbly like you see like you know fish eggs or something right and I didn't even try just it's just like I said I just trusted in the technique the rest just kind of happens on its own it's really cool see that getting these forms to come out Another thing you might want to do is look at some Dutch still lights They're on the 1500s. See some, you'll see some beautiful, beautiful paintings of still lifes. They do the best amazing still lifes. Still going at it, gang. Still working on it. I 
I really kind of pushed the valley down uh, back in here more than where it really is. Step back maybe four or five feet and then come back into it. So yeah, I'm not really like this. Um, I might, you know, stepping back to get a good vantage point of my work. Let's see, this, this little button over here, let's get this. It's like a nose, a clown's nose. See that? I don't think you should have outlines. You see, there's no outlines. Sometimes some of these grapes will merge into each other. And I think that's fine. Remember, you're making a drawing, you're not really just taking a picture. A little hatching going on here. I really wanted to let the camera run as you see this whole thing. My videos, they get so long. But I will, you know, we'll, I'll give you as much what you need to um, make sense of this. This is a hard topic to draw. Grapes are not easy to draw, let me tell you. I think it's fun though. See that? Before you know it, we'll be done. Like, well, how did that happen? Light speed. Faster than the Speed of Love by Brian Griffin. <laughs> okay, um, let's do some blending here. Yeah, I have all sorts of silly thoughts in my head when I work. You know, you, you're drawing and then something will come up in your, in your head. You know, from the subconscious to the conscious, you know. And you're just like, oh, that's funny. What am I thinking about that? Okay, let's see. It was a neurologist, writer, named Sam Harris, and he says, like, uh, he talks about free will. Like, there's really no, we don't really have free will because... Like, he'll consciously make a decision about something, but he concludes that from his research, I mean, he's a, you're out, you know, he's studied brain uh, activity, you know. He's got a, I think he's got a doctorate in it or something. He says, like, from what he researched and what he knows, um, like, I make the decision to get a cup of coffee consciously, like, right now. He says, yeah, but you, may, you, you already concluded that before you even made the conscious decision to get that cup of coffee. I think my back was. So, in a sense, you know, I say, I want to get a cup of coffee. But he says that that was already determined for you subconsciously before you even consciously made that decision. That brings up some really interesting implications, you know. We can go back to the whole concept of artificial intelligence, you know, art. The thing about AI is, you know, you know, the topic of love, you know, does an artificial intelligent computer love. He, he, you know, like, and one of the things is, like, I think being an artist is, you know, it gives you the chance to really look at things, you know. I mean, one of the things that we're not even talking about is subject matter. I mean, we're drawing a grape, we're drawing a pear, we're drawing a bird's nest, and, um, but, like, these are ways to get you to be able to paint and draw the stuff that you want to paint and draw. Like, you look at the artwork by the, um, illustrator Michael Whalen, he's before your time if you're in your 20s and even 30s, he's still before your time. Uh, probably not 30s, you know, he's, he's still alive, you know, so. But like when I was in art school, I was interested in his work, and, you know, he's, he, he paints uh, 
for a lot of science fiction um, authors. You know, the book covers, you know. And, like, so he, he went to art school. He learned to do a lot of this stuff. I don't even know if he's heard of Charles Barg. I mean, I really dug into this, you know, and a colleague and me, you know, it's like, you know, like closed circles of people say, hey, let's, let's use this to teach. Because I, 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 I had a lot of teachers around me where a lot of these professional artists, say they stop interacting with teachers, and so they just kind of get locked in their own program, and that's it. Uh, but, you know, he... He went to art school and he, he, he learned to do all this stuff. You know, he can draw still lights and paint. You know, he's amazing. Um, so, like, he he's able to, you know, create any world he wants. And so, like, that's what... All these things are, like, there for you to do that if you so desire. And like the Bern Hogarth, you know, um, Tarzan comic artist, you know, the famous Bern Hogarth, he... He, he designed these books so you can use, so you can learn to create whatever it is that you want, you know. Preferably, in his case, you know, for comics, because he was a comic book artist. So, I mean, like, and so, and, like, I try to tell people that, like, this is not the end game. Oh, I'm drawing a grape because I'm drawing a grape and that's it. No, we could do a painting of this, you know, on a beautiful, you know, surface of, like, you know, primed, uh, you know, uh, canvas, you know, or, you know, oil on panel, even oil on copper, you know. I'm not kidding. See that? You can paint oil on copper. There's a way to do that. So, like, and, and you're in drawing one, you know, you're, if you're taking my class and watching these videos for, uh, you know, and, and like, this is like, you know, the quote, the Chicago song, only, only the beginning, you know. Again, showing you my age. This is just the beginning, you know. And what can you do with it, you know. What can you do with it? Some of you might get into computer art. You know, working with computers exclusively. Because that's, that's where the money is, you know. In uh, many ways. Uh, that is true. And you'll find that a lot of these things apply uh, anyways. They, and they have like these brushes that imitate charcoal, you know, and so it's like, you know, I'm over here like, well, why don't I just use real charcoal, you know, but that's just me. I kind of like the idea of like working for a studio, making, designing the backgrounds and this concept type art and just like well I want to do it with traditional materials though <laughs> and it's like well you know we we want it done in Photoshop it's like yeah I know okay uh, you can see where this is going you know we're getting some headway here we are making a lot of headway and I softened up parts of these grapes see that notice how they're not all hard outlines you have all hard outlines, you get like a, you, see if you have a hard outlines, you flatten the image. You see that? When you have outlines, you flatten the image. When you, you know, draw with tonality, like what I'm doing now, I'm drawing with tonality, softening up the edge over here, but this edge over there is sharp. I have a sharp edge on one side, soft edge on the other side. And you get this sense of uh, dimension. See that? So we're getting there. We're getting there. Notice the magic of the marble and how it reflects the grapes. That's so much fun. It's great to see that happen. So, um, you know, we're, we're just going away at it. And I'll do a little bit more and then I'll you know, have you see what I did. Because you get the idea, right? No tricks up my sleeve. Here's what we have so far. So let's get back into it. You'll see some of what I'm doing. I hope I'm not in the way. I really softening up some of those edges, bring out more dark areas, and um, the looking for the core of shadow which is 
this right here. And this right here. See that? I brought out the shape of this grape there. Smooth out the Now the thing is, there's a magical thing going on with these grapes that I know from looking at real grapes. There, there, there tends to be, with real grapes, this gray area, highlight, cross shadow, and then this, this area here is a little bit lighter than that area. You see that a lot in these guys, and so I almost have to put that in there myself knowing what real grapes do. Because you see, real grapes are full of water and you know grape so if you squeeze it you know water will you know come out and you'll have grape you know so it's like it's almost like little balloons but unfortunately artificial grapes have nothing but air light bouncing around inside there you know it's different than light bouncing around inside these semi-transparent objects but these are still good grapes to study from. They, they do help me really draw, you know. And they'll help you too. And like, I, I wanted to exaggerate certain features of the drawing. Like, the core of shadow here is not as pronounced. And I don't know if it does it justice, so I might have to, you know, pull it back. You wonder, why not take the chamois cloth there? Well, because, you know, it's too, it's too clunky, you know, this, this allows me to get really in there. So, you know, uh, be careful with that. Okay. Get so fine-tuned here that I can use my blender to, to, to actually draw. See that? Look for the opportunity to do that. It's kind of neat. When you draw, before you draw, wash your hands. You don't want to have too much uh, of the natural oils in your hand because I tend to hold my eraser a lot. So if I have oil, it winds up in the eraser. And also, if you touch a drawing with uh, your hand that's not been washed, and then you have like vine charcoal over it, it'll collect in that fingerprint, and then you'll have a fingerprint. So always, you know, try to wash your hands before you actually draw, especially with charcoal. Then if you eat something, you, let's say I'm hungry, take a break, I wash my hands, get all the charcoal off my hands, I eat, make sure my hands don't have any food on me, no extra bits of marinara sauce for my lasagna plate, you know, and I need to get back to work. So, you know, you, you know, one thing you don't want to do is eat while you're drawing, and you know, there's all these little things, you know, that you have to observe. It's coming along nicely. It looks like a toe over here, which is great, because, you know, they kind of look like toes. Green toes. Toes of a Martian. There's something going on here. Oh wow, yeah, that's crazy. Like there's a grape behind, behind here with the highlight. See that little bugger? Yeah, that's fascinating. And then this is supposed to be all shaded because I, I kind of did the creative license here. Like that. And then here, this is another guy, another guy, another grape coming in. Like that.
taking the HP now, doing some little little areas. Little areas. So I don't want to rush this, I want this to be right. It looks good. You know, things just don't feel right because they're not right. Like right here, what's that? You know, it's not done. So you come in there and you, you know, let it know what's up. See that? You have yet to still hit this with the white charcoal. The HP is good for when you're really coming to a close in certain areas. You know, you you went there with your 4B for the darker areas, 2B for like the chorus shadow, HB for the rest, and you really can soften things up. What's really neat is on each individual grape is like a person because they all are different. Each has their own personality. You know, one of the things is you want to like have this idea about life. And even with non representational art, there's a sense of vitality, there's a sense of life exuding from the work. And like, so for these drawings too, a sense of life. And so, like, each, if every single grape was the exact same shape, with the exact same placement of the highlight and the curved shadow. It would let, look like, or it wouldn't feel like there's life. So with variety, you get this sense of life. No variety, no genetic drift, right? So like certain certain um, grapes don't even have a highlight, like here and here. I like that sense of myster mysterious quality that I'm going to leave alone. Like this here, I love that. It just kind of slips in the dark. When I look at the real grape and my eyes are 20-20, which they're not because I'm wearing glasses, I can see all sorts of detail. But you know what? I'm not Claudio Bravo. I'm not going to do those. I mean, I might be able to flirt with it a little bit, but I'm, that's just not my way. I want to, you know flirt with this idea of obscurity. I love the obscurity. You know, I love the obscurity of things. I really like that area. That's my favorite area. Like, there's another grape right here, but I, I leave it ambiguous. Big thing right here is this shape. It's actually two leaves, and we're going to see how to address it. And so, I kind of have to still finish up these guys right here. Little core of shadow action. So the thing is that glow, reflected light.
See that? Little guy there. A lot of stuff going on. I've been doing a lot of uh, <clears throat> abstract art lately, and every time I get into these uh, drawing classes and these demonstrations, I feel like, man, I miss doing uh, this kind of stuff. It's like my first love. I, mean, I didn't start out doing abstract art. That's just like an individual journey. As an artist, you go through your own individual journey, and you know these things happen, you know. But man, I just uh, really enjoy doing this kind of a thing, and I hope you do as well. See that? There, that's a nice telltale story of a grape. That kind of uh, action. And here, the shadow, highlight, and reflected light. And they're not all the same, folks. They're not all the same. This one here has a really nice bright kind of a thing going on. And why not? It's close to the uh, marble, you see. So that's why we're really just trying to take care of these guys. And there's a couple of differences. I know you're going to see it, you know, play a game with my drawing. You know, how many differences can you spot with this drawing and, you know, from the still life, you know? Doesn't mean that this is wrong, is it? You know? It, 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 you have to really play with that, you know. I know as a learner, you should try to learn how to really be accurate. And, and I am accurate, but I, I took some creative license where, wow, it looks good. I like it. I'm going to keep it. You are welcome to do that, too. The trick is when you're not looking at the grape anymore, you're just looking at the drawing. You don't want to feel like something's wrong. <clears throat> Especially when you get like an audience looking at it. You don't want them to say, something doesn't look right. Well, then that, that means that, you know, uh, the creative license didn't work, you know. Um, so, you know, you got to make sure you take that with a grain of salt. Make sure you're really not cheating yourself because you want to really try to get, you know, get, you know, get this tail on the donkey. Maybe we should draw a donkey. <clears throat> One of the struggles with an eight-week class as opposed to like customary 14 or 15-week classes, you have to figure out what to do and what not to do. Like if we had a lot more time, maybe we can get some pictures and draw some animals, you know. Um, sure, it'd be nice to be in close proximity with real, you know, like a real horse. You know, that stuff's great, you know, and we did that. I did that at a school. We had a real horse at our school, and we drew him from life. And I gave the drawing to somebody or something, and it's a nice drawing of a horse from life. And then I did other ones from photographs, and, well, you know, it's, you, you, what you do is you, you have the animal, and then you, you, you do sketches from real life to get the feel of this, you know, uh, critter and then you have photographs too and then you work from the photographs and plus your sketches you did from life and that's how you get a nice painting that's how all the great wildlife artists do it today a long time ago they had to use dead animals taxidermy you have these animals that are stuffed especially the like the fowl and like wow so you have like your geese or whatever stuffed and you see these paintings Back in the day, in the 15, 16, 1700, a lot of those animals were probably stuffed. And now it's great because we don't have to stuff them, just photograph them, you know. That's, I prefer that anyways. Um, photography and representational art, you know, I think they go hand in hand. You can't be anti-photograph. I'm not an anti-photographer. I'm not really interested in looking at a lot of photographs unless they're of some some place that I can't be. And also, if it's done right, you photograph an ordinary object in such a way that it just captivates you. And that's what hopefully, one of the, one of the philosophies that you want to address with drawing, like say, a still life is, like, wow, that, that fruit is so beautiful. It goes beyond just what a fruit is. You see something deeper just because of the way the artist rend rendered it. And, and, and these are things that you see when you look at great art, classical art. And you learn about beauty. And it, it's, 
it's definitely I'm glad I was able to get exposed be exposed to that I always find myself wanting to return to it and I'm glad of it and you might be too But I can keep going, you know, and I'm not going to give up until it's done. And, boy, I'm really taking some license here. Uh, I think it's still a nice drawing. That's kind of weird, you know, like, looks like that's part of the grape and it's not, it's a shadow. And so, you know, you got to be really aware of that, you know, say, like, okay, that's well, not the grape. This here is totally ambiguous, but man, I just like the way it looks. I don't want to go in there and draw those grapes. It's just, uh, I'm trying to create art, man. Well, like, <clears throat> what do we do with that? First of all, I'm going to work on this leaf. And I want to deal with the highlights. I'm so tempted to take out that white charcoal pencil, but not just yet, not just yet. And there's a lot of activity with that. And it's not even a real leaf, but it, there's, it's just, there's some fidelity to it that I can play with. you got to look for the patterns. And, you know, that's what I'm doing And one way is to look for the directional flow. They create like these suggestion of line, lines, suggestion of lines. I hope I didn't move it out of your camera view. Looking pretty good. I think I'm getting better at these can these uh this filming. Remember, if you look at my cube drawing, I never uh, redid it yet. There's like a sections where I crop it from the top and from the bottom. It's funny. So that was like my first one, I think. So you see that? And we could we, you know we could still work on it, and let's just like finish it up. We're we're getting we're getting there, you know. I'm going to get like a 2B. To be or not to be, that is a question. Okay, here we go. Far B would work in here, but, you know, I'm really trying to be subtle. If need be, I can just pick it up. HP, a little bit too hard. I couldn't do this if I didn't sharpen the pencil. You see how sharp it is? Before it wasn't that sharp. When I started, it wasn't that sharp. And when, we, when you weren't looking, I decided to sharpen it. Now we can come in here. See 
see that? What's really cool what's happening right now is this leaf has light hitting it, hitting at it from behind it. So there's like these glow areas. The highlight from the grapes wind up as like these glow 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 areas on here. And I'm gonna be bringing that in here soon. So the translucency. Now let's look at these turns. Opaque. What is opaque? Opaque is when light cannot pass through an object, so it looks, you know, solid and light can't go through it. It can only bounce off it. Translucency is when light can go through it, but not all the way, just a little bit. Transparency is like when it goes through. Glass is transparent. These little grapes are translucent. And <clears throat> I would say like this, this wood and all that is, is um, opaque. It's good to know all these things. It helps you with your, your work as a visual artist. It really does. ways about looking at art is like representational artists especially I mean it's going back as far as da Vinci is like they became more knowledgeable of the things that they were drawing than the scientists at the time the physicists at the time didn't know what da Vinci knew about how water would move and he knew more about how birds flew than the biologists at the time he knew more about how the heart worked than the doctors at the time. He's the one who figured out about the different valves of the heart. Not the doctors at the time. Because he was paying attention. Not to mention, you know, because of his dissection of cadavers. Michelangelo did the same thing. And, like, so that's just a great example. Like, artists, you know, would sometimes be in the forefront of, like, how things work. It's a fascinating, you know, little tidbit. I think finding the fine line between what you see and what you feel is going to help you come up with some really nice works of art that will be beholden uh, for, for many. Um, so go for it, you know, dig in. Pretty neat the contrast of that leaf and that leaf, and then um, well, let's get the highlights. Let's pull that out Over there, and then those glow areas. My God, I know that there's there's something going on here, like above the leaf. No, I, oh, I take that back. That is the leaf. <laughs> okay, right here, there's the edge of the leaf. It has a certain amount of thickness, and that's lit up. See that? And that's really cool because that means that behind it, the light is bathing, you know, and splashing on it. And then, like, um, here, there's, like, this patch of, of a glow, a glowing patch. See that? It's glowing. It's pretty cool. And let's get that going here. Glowing patch. Here. See that? To me, it's beautiful, and it's artificial. I mean, imagine what we would do. And the thing is, you know, I, you know, I've been around a little bit longer than some people watching this. I'm 56 years old, so I, I paid attention to a lot of things. Like when I'm not drawing or painting, I'm looking at grape leaves from the vine. You know, I'm looking at leaves, you know, on the tree with the light going through it. I've done that many times, just staring at it. And I think that subconsciously, it's going in here, even though I'm drawing a um like this this uh plastic it's plastic plastic oh no okay and then like here i'm going to there's a stem make it black
this sleeve goes like this and it just cuts like that like it's been sliced there or something I don't know like sometimes it's it's great to kind of like not know what's going on you just draw what you see and it just adds to the complexity of life like there's there's things imagine being alive a long time ago when you didn't know anything about what science knows and even what da Vinci knew and then you see something and you just can't make sense of it like take for instance the moon our ancient ancestors did not know that that was a ball in the sky and the light was bouncing off it from the sun they would just draw it as shapes and the shapes would change and to them it was like it was alive pretty neat and it's just the mystery of of things that exist, the mystery of existence, the mystery of being. And like you want to be curious about nature, you want to be curious about life. And especially if you're like what we're doing here is by definition naturalism. This is called naturalism in terms of art. Naturalistic drawing. And there's a lot to be said about it. Even the age of cameras and computers and stuff. And Picasso was one of the artists that blew that, who blew that out of the water. He said the camera is what, the camera shows me what I shouldn't paint. <laughs> you know, what not to paint. And, you know, that's very valid. You know, like I studied art and I'm into it. I teach it. And I know what he's saying. And it's extremely valid. It's a really intense statement for the time. Turn of the century, things have been changing. And then, you know, so there's reasons for things. You might want to take things... Uh, uh, and put them in context by reading about it. History is a very, very important thing. It's, it's really fascinating. But na going back to naturalism, I think that if you kind of know what you're doing and why, and what happens is as you get serious about your art, you be asked to explain why you're doing it. And uh, at first you're like, well, don't tell me what to do. You know, I'm an art. I can do. I can, I can draw and paint what I want. And that's true to a certain extent, but when you have to, like, promote your stuff and try to sell it for money, I think you're kind of caught into this, like, whole thing, like, well, what about the demographic? Is <laughs> there demographic and all that? And so, like, what I say is if you want to stick with what you want to draw or paint, have an explanation for it. And you learn that in graduate school. And I wrote all sorts of stuff where I was painting. I mean, I, I learned something. And uh, I'm sure you will too. So we're almost done. It's kind of weird, right? And like, if you notice, the actual leaf of the of the of the witchman jig over there has a lot more going on here. But I like I like the ambiguity, and I'm gonna leave it alone. And so more credit license on this puppy bird. So um, I'm gonna come over here with the white charcoal pencil from the left to the right. That, see that and we don't want to do the whole area in white but I know that there's some nice activity going on here in the marble that's speaking to me and I'm gonna use the side of the pencil not the tip the side not the tip stepping like away looking at my subject and just kind of like really feeling for what I see so let me said about this like your eyes feel so you're touching that thing when you when you look at it. Kind of weird way of looking at things, right? Your senses, they touch. Touching with my eyes. It's an interesting concept. I bet you didn't hear about that one. Hmm? It's interesting how to, you know, uh, how we perceive things. It's interesting how we perceive things. Something went on here. I like how these crescent shapes remind me of a bunch of little moons. Like a whole bunch of little moons here. Kind of neat, right? I don't want to make them too bright, but I want to soft them. I want to make them powdery. See that? 
Much better. See that the reflection. We are closing in on this one. Try not to rush it, you know. I'm really, really looking for what I have to do. What we did was I, I finished up the rest of this with the white charcoal pencil and then I came in with this paintbrush and I was able to smooth out certain areas. So again, notice how not everything is outlined. There is areas where parts of the shape kind of blend into the dark. You see that right here, right here? and. Um, you see, that's how you can use the brush to your advantage. See that? And I left some of this flat, black, or flat gray. I, this continues all the way from here to here, but I like the way it looked. And then like here, this is shadow. And um, I think that you'll find some of your own little interesting nuances as you draw uh, the similar um, subject matter. And here we have the finished product and um, I, I removed the blue tape and I was flirting with the same idea with what we did for the bird's nest with the vignetted edges in contrast with the hard edge for the top and bottom. And I signed it and I hope you, um, you got something out of this video.